In our number system, we have 10 symbols. These are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And with just these 10 symbols, we can represent any number imaginable. Well, technically, any rational number, because although we love pi and other irrational numbers like i, they have enough distinguishing features to place them in a category of their own. For us to truly appreciate numbers, we need to snap back in time to the early days when early humans didn't yet have advanced number systems as compared to ours. The early humans made scratch marks or tally marks with each stroke representing the passage of a single unit of time, as seen in this more than 20,000 year old bone also known as the Ishango bone discovered in 1960 in the then Belgian Congo. However, they must have quickly realized using a single stroke for each item was cumbersome when it came to higher numbers and they needed better ways to represent larger numbers. Through time, different civilizations developed different systems for representing numbers, mostly based on 10 symbols. Why? Hmm, maybe because humans count using our fingers, which we call digits. Egyptian symbols included a stroke for one, a horseshoe for 10, a coil for 100, a water lily for 1000, a finger for 10,000, a toad for 100,000, and a kneeling servant for 1 million. The Romans thought, hey, we may not need symbols after all, why don't we just use the letters of the alphabet? And so they picked out seven letters of the alphabet to which they assigned different values. The letter I as 1, V as 5, X as 10, L as 50, C 100, D 500, and M 1000. And because that wasn't complicated enough, they decided to introduce a set of rules to be followed when writing any number. First, a symbol could be repeated which indicated addition of its value. But hey, you couldn't repeat a symbol consecutively more than three times. However, if you wrote a symbol of a smaller value before that of a higher one, it meant subtracting its value from the higher value, but if you wrote it after the symbol of a higher value, it meant adding its value to the symbol of the higher value. So with our seven letters and three rules, let's count from one to ten in Roman. So for two, simple, add an I to indicate another addition of one. For three, add another I to indicate another addition of one. Now for four, add another hold on rule number two you cannot repeat a symbol consecutively more than three times so we don't do that so what do we do right rule number three smaller symbol before larger symbol and subtraction okay let's see so for 4, if we took the symbol for 5, which is V, and we put an I in front of it, it means subtracting the value of 1 from 5, which is 4. Hmm, correct. For number 6, we apply the second half of rule number 3, which is writing the smaller symbol after the larger symbol to indicate addition. So V for 5 plus I, 6. For 7, add another I. For 8, add another I. For 9, again cannot repeat a symbol more than three times so as in four we take the symbol for ten and we add an i in front of it so it's i x and you can actually still find roman numbers in use today in some expensive watches the olympics wwe wrestlemania or at the end of movies but of all the inconveniences the romans were determined to put us through I don't know if there's any story more interesting than that of the Super Bowl 50. You see, as part of the NFL's tradition when it comes to the Super Bowl, they use Roman numerals because of the prestige they give to the occasion, you know. But when it came to Super Bowl 50 in 2016, after 3 years and 73 attempts, they decided to switch to the decimal system and the next year they would then switch again back to the Roman numeral tradition. But then, I don't know if that will still be tradition, because you stopped along the way. Anyway, I won't get into the details of that story, but as a hint for you to figure out why, try coming up with a prestigious logo that says Super Bowl L. 
The Babylonians used a base 60 system in which they had only two symbols for 1 and 10. And to represent numbers from 1 to 59, you simply added and combined these symbols to correspond to the number. For numbers higher than 60, like 61, you simply divide the number by 60. And to express this number, you write your answer and leave a gap and then the remainder. So for 61, you divide 61 by 60, which is 1, and leave a gap, then write the remainder, 1. However, a big problem at that time was, there was no symbol for 0. And so for the Babylonians, distinguishing between 60 and 1 was probably a guessing game. Anyway, if the ancient Babylonians could have been able to construct the amazing hanging gardens which were one of the wonders of the world, I don't think Nebuchadnezzar would have really been concerned about some insignificant zero. And again, ever ask yourself why we measure our time in 60 seconds and 60 minutes? You can blame it on the efficiency of the Babylonian systems. It wouldn't be until around the 5th century in India when nothing was discovered. Or should I say a symbol for nothing and zero was born. And together with one would go on to revolutionize our modern knowledge of science. Suddenly we could make numbers as big or as small as we wanted. We could understand the connection between positive numbers and negative numbers. In fact, zero was like learning a new language. Our current 10 symbols are generally accepted to have come from the Hindu-Arabic system and one school of thought says the reason our symbols have their shapes comes from the number of angles contained in each figure. So for 1, you have 1 angle, for 2, you have 2, for 3, 3, 4, 4 angles, 5, 5 angles, 6, 6 angles, 7, 7 angles, 8, 8 angles, and 9, 9 angles. And above all, our beautiful zero with no angle to spoil its smooth shape. By the way, the reason why wedding rings are perfectly smooth and round is to symbolize the never-ending commitment between a couple who take an oath to stand by one another and your love has no beginning and no end and... So there you have it, our base 10 number system. However, we've seen that these 10 symbols are all we need to represent any number. So how does that work? Take for example the number 120,250. This is a single number, but here we find some symbols actually repeating. So how do these symbols differ from one another, or are they the same? To understand this, I need to introduce some new words, face value and place value. So we've seen that these 10 symbols represent the 10 numbers. The value represented by each symbol is known as its face value. And the face value of 1 is less than the face value of 2, which is less than the face value of 3, which is less than and so on and so on, which is less than the face value of 9. So you get it. However, when we get to 9, we've basically run out of symbols. So for numbers greater than 9, when we get to 9, to get and to indicate our next number, we just bundle up all our 9 symbols already and we count them up as one bundle and we indicate that by one new spot to the left and inserting our 0 in the spot of the last bundle. The same applies for each spot and these spots are known as the place value. And to get the actual value of each of these symbols and how they differ from one another, even though they are technically the same, you have to combine the face value of each symbol with its place value. Now in our base 10 system, each time you move one place to the left, you increase by powers of 10. So starting from the right, you have each face value multiplied by its place value. So, in our number, the first two is found on the third place from the right and the second two on the fifth place from the right. Although they have the same face value, the first two symbolizes a mere 200, while the second two symbolizes 
20,000. So there you have it, our base 10 number system. In future videos we're gonna discover more exciting and fun things about numbers including other number based systems like the binary systems and its applications in computer technology or the base 12 system and why some people are protesting for us to discard our decimal system and switch to a dozenal system. This channel is dedicated to encourage education especially in the sciences and technology in order to inspire a new generation of critical thinkers and problem solvers. But we need your support in order to achieve our goals and keep creating amazing content. So consider joining our Patreon page where we offer several more exclusive content and gifts for our supporters. Meanwhile, if you enjoyed the video, you smash the like button, hit subscribe and click on the bell icon so every time we upload new content, you're gonna be the first to know. And just so you know, the upside down hand is not there for downloading. Just click the like button, subscribe and stay tuned.